Hugh Edwards is a senior lecturer in economics at Loughborough University. He joins me with more on the economic impact of COVID-19. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. You know, we still, you, we still don't know how long major cities around the world will be shut down and people staying at, how, uh, staying at home. How long do you think major economies can keep pumping in money through aid packages before risking uh, sovereign debt crises and economic collapse, especially across Europe? It varies very much across the uh, upon the individual country. It also varies quite a lot upon the you know the way in which they decide to handle the virus and in the way in which it returns. Um, you know, at the moment, countries are obviously locking down, but locking down involves um, expended it. It's pushing individuals and small companies into severe debt. Now, behind that lie the um, governments and potentially the central banks. Um, now, it's very dif different, of course, between the poorer countries where the governments and the central banks really don't have any capacity to stand behind this and the more advanced countries where they do. So in the more advanced countries, they are furloughing people. They are trying at the moment to um, you know, provide support for people to take some time off. But obviously, they have to hope that they can get back and that they can get back in a way which maintains sufficient social distancing and sufficient testing and tracing that the virus does not return so badly that they have to clamp down again. The nightmare scenario will be having to have repeated clampdowns over a year. Now, as regards you know, the ability of, of the financial system, governments and the central banks behind them to to deal with it, it very much depends upon which central banks. Um, you know, obviously, the, the wealthier ones can print money. The risk at some point is that this will probably return as inflation. But, you know, that's uh, something that they have to deal right. with down the road. They, the poorer countries have great difficulties. They may have to borrow from the IMF, who don't necessarily have the funds to do it. They're making a trillion dollars available, maybe may not be enough. In the middle, you've got countries like um, some of the poorer Eurozone countries. Um, you know, what they would like to do is what, say, Britain or France are doing, which is effectively nationalizing much or standing behind individuals, they've learned from 2008, standing behind individuals and small companies and even large companies like airlines who are facing temporary credit difficulties. Okay. Um, but the, Euro, the, you know, the Eurozone is going to have to make a decision at some point, you know, does the Eurozone as a whole stand behind Italy and Spain, which is very vulnerable because the tourist sector is basically collapsed this year. Right, right. Um, Let's, um, or, can we talk or, about America, which is uh, at serious risk of slipping into a recession, which could be worse than the subprime crisis of 2008. What ripple effect do you think that this could have around the world, what's happening in America? Well, again, it depends upon what they do with, I mean, you know, the, the initial American projections from, let's say, 10, 15 years ago was if, he, if we had a major flu pandemic, it was, you know, down by 5% one quarter and up by 5% one or two quarters later. Now, it's quite clear that this is a much longer and more severe crisis than this. The, the federal administration is still all over the place on this and not providing sufficient support, I think, to the, some of the state governors, uh, particularly in New York, who are in desperate states. Um, you know, it is going to affect major companies. I think, you know, people have learned from the 2008 crisis that they can, A, they can't let companies go down, but B, they actually need to have something in place to help individuals. And the USA, with its weaker social protections, is actually worse placed in that regard than the European countries. So Europe has a problem with the Eurozone. USA has a problem of insufficient backing for individuals, and that that will follow through to the financial sector. If the US financial sector um, runs into severe difficulty, basically either the Fed is going to have to print a huge amount of money to bail everyone out, um, which, which has its own risks, or else, um, or else this is going to go global. Oh, yeah, a lot of... So uh, you, Eurozone of, and, and, and right. the U.S. are both having to face diffi yeah. difficulties. In the U.S., it's the federal government having to step in in a way it hasn't done. In Euro Europe, it, it's deciding, you know, do we stand by each other or do we effectively um, end up with Spain Certainly. and Italy leaving the Eurozone? Right, yeah, so some uh, very difficult decisions that are going to have to be made. Hugh Edwards joining us um, from Loughborough. Thank you so much for your time today.